you want to pass the GED science exam, you need to know what to study. In this video, I'll be talking about what you need to know about the Earth's natural resources in order to score 145 on the GED science exam and achieve your goal. This is the 12th video in a series that I've been making about what you need to be familiar with to pass the GED science exam. As always, this is only an introduction to this topic, but I hope it'll be a great place for you to start as you begin to study. Humans need many things in order to survive. Our planet, Earth, provides these natural resources, including air, water, soil, minerals, and energy. Natural resources can be renewable or non-renewable. Non-renewable resources are those that take millions of years to form naturally. So once we've used them, we won't be able to replace them for a long, long, long time. A key example of a non-renewable resource is a fossil fuel. Fossil fuels include peat, coal, natural gas, and oil. These were all formed of decayed plant material that were compressed and fossilized over millions of years. We use fossil fuels for a lot of things, including to generate electricity, to heat homes, to cook food, and to generate consumer goods. Other non-renewable natural resources include the soil and minerals like metals and rocks. As the human population grows and as industrialization has spread over the past 200 years or so, we have increasingly used more and more of the Earth's natural resources. It's estimated that humans have already used between one-tenth and one-quarter of the Earth's supply of oil. As we deplete the more easily accessible sources of fossil fuels, more and more risky and destructive forms of mining and drilling are developed to reach deeper reserves. Burning fossil fuels can contribute to air pollution that's hazardous to human health. It can also increase the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is a leading cause of a changing climate. Industrialization can also lead to soil and water pollution. Agricultural practices can deplete and erode soil, and sewage, industrial waste, and agricultural byproducts can run off into natural water sources and lead to pollution there. There has been a growing understanding for the need for conservation over the past 50 years or so. Conservation is how we describe the effort to preserve natural resources. There have been increased efforts to reduce or eliminate the use of non-renewable fuel sources. Many countries have made pledges to eliminate the most polluting sources like coal, and others have pledged to become what's called carbon neutral in the coming years. This requires the development and implementation at scale of renewable energy sources. Renewable resources are those that can either be replenished or are not depleted when they're used. These can include solar energy, wind energy, and geothermal energy from the Earth's core. Water is also considered a renewable resource because it does cycle through the environment. However, pollution can impact our ability to access clean and usable water. Biomass fuel is also considered Considered renewable because it can be regrown on a human time scale. This includes biological materials from plants and animals, including food, sewage, and ethanol, which is a fuel made from corn. However, there are more and less sustainable ways to grow and harvest these biological materials. Other conservation efforts include recycling materials like glass, metals, and plastic. This involves recollecting and reusing materials rather than harvesting new materials from the earth. Safe disposal of waste can also mitigate the harm caused to air, soil, and water. Responsible agricultural practices can help protect the health of the soil as well as local waterways. And finally, water treatment and recycling can reduce pollution and help preserve our access to this resource. Okay, so that was a brief introduction to the Earth's natural resources and the vocabulary surrounding it that you might see on the GED science test. Of course, there's always more to learn about this topic, so I suggest that you spend some time with the GED preparation manual as well as with the great resources that are available online like Crash Course and Khan Academy. If you have any questions about this topic, feel free to leave them in the comments and we can try to help each other out. Just remember that you're not trying to become an expert on this topic, you are just trying to be familiar with the vocabulary so that you can read and answer questions confidently when you take the test. On this channel, I make videos about how to study more effectively so 
so that you can achieve your goals. There are already a ton of other videos about the GED science test in my playlist, as well as videos surrounding all of the other GED subject tests. If this was a helpful resource for you, please press the like button so that YouTube knows that it's great for studiers. It is your support that allows me to take the time to make these resources for you. So thank you as always for watching and until next time, happy studying.